We're coming down off the high from that huge Memorial Day storm we had just a few days ago, but the sun's not done yet. It just launched a solar storm that'll probably go east of us, and there's a new sunspot rotating into view, and boy, it's already angry. Those stories and more in the news this week. The space weather's been very fun this week. Aurora photographers, I'm sure, are still going through their pictures. But wait, there's more. The sun just launched another filament. This was back on the 30th. It looks like it's going to go east of Earth, but we might see something from it here in the next couple days. On top of that, right on its heels, we've got a sunspot that's rotating into Earth view. It's actually a pair of sunspots that have been very busy on the backside. They've already fired off a solar storm, and they're firing off flares. So we might start getting some more flare activity. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see we've been still pretty quiet. We're sitting well below the sea floor, and things have just been lumbering along. We did get a little bit of C-Class activity from Region 2659 before it rotated around the backside. And we thought that was going to be it. But this new region that's rotating onto the east limb and into Earthview, that has actually brought the activity back up. We're now beginning to see C-Class flares again, so you amateur radio operators can expect a little bit of noise on the bands. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see going into last weekend we were pretty quiet. We had a lot of aurora photographers who were disappointed at that solar storm fizzle from about a couple weeks back. But then we had this new solar storm that had got launched. We weren't expecting much, but when that core of the storm hit, BAM! It hit hard. This thing jumped up to a G3 level. We had aurora clear down to mid-latitudes and it lasted for like 12 solid hours. Got some amazing aurora that we'll show you in a second. But when it turned off, it turned off. And things kind of got quieter and quieter and they're going to continue to be this quiet over the next few days. And this solar storm brought us spectacular aurora views all around the world, which was a bit surprising considering the storm was so slow. We didn't expect it to have the impact that it did. Now, when it started out, it gave us beautiful views in Norfolk in the UK, and then it dropped quickly down to the Netherlands. But the big storm didn't start until a few hours later when the aurora had moved over the Western Hemisphere. That meant we had brilliant displays all over Canada. So brilliant, in fact, it pierced the clouds in Ontario, and it was all over Alberta, and in British Columbia, and in the United States, we saw it in New Hampshire, and all the way down to New York. We saw it in North Dakota and in Iowa. We even saw it in Pennsylvania. And there were views in Michigan and Minnesota. And we had multiple views for people saying that they saw it from Yellowstone National Park. And it even dropped down to Nebraska. We saw views in Wyoming and clear down to Arizona. And it even made it east of Sacramento in California. Now down south, we saw it in New Zealand and Tasmania. It lit the skies. And it even made it all the way up to Melbourne, Australia. And here's a special treat for those of you 30,000 amateur radio operators who were at Hamvention just a week ago. We missed it by one week. These were the views in Cleveland, which is only 20 miles north of Dayton, Ohio. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And when you look at the sun, you can see those two bright active regions kind of rotating around, and there's a lot of solar storms being launched, a lot of reconfiguration, kind of some shadows moving around. It's kind of, you can just see a lot of busy stuff. These are the two active regions that are beginning to rotate into Earth view now on the east limb. So when we say that there's going to be a lot of flare activity, and maybe solar storm launches, we mean it because these things have been busy pretty much their entire rotation on the backside. And now that they're entering into Earth view, we're going to have them with us for the next two weeks. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are coming down from that huge solar storm. At high latitudes, NOAA's expecting only unsettled conditions until we get to about the weekend when we get a chance for active conditions and maybe even a small possibility for a minor storm conditions due to this small coronal hole that's going to be giving us a little bit of fast wind, but it won't last long. At mid-latitudes, we're still expecting unsettled conditions with about a 20% chance of uh, active conditions, and that should last through the weekend before things begin to calm down.
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are seeing that pair of active regions rotating into Earth view, and they are beginning to pop off flares. So NOAA is giving us about a 5% chance for an M-class flare, but this could change as we continue monitoring these regions. The nice thing is that it's also increasing this amount of solar flux, so you amateur radio operators should enjoy a little bit better propagation on the bands, although they're probably going to be noisy with all this little popping and popping of flares. So the space weather this week is kind of quieting down and quieting down just a little bit, but the sun remains busy. Now it did launch that solar storm that's likely going to go east of us, but we might get a little bit of wake from that storm in around the weekend. So we're kind of watching that along with some fast wind from a very small coronal hole. So around the weekend things might get a little bit dicey, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now we're also watching some active regions that are rotating onto the east limb, and they are firing off some flares, and we're seeing even some sea clouds. Flares. So amateur radio operators expect a bit of noise on the bands. It could be kind of, you know, bothering you a little bit, but shouldn't be too bad. And you GPS operators, things may get a little bit strange, especially around the dawn dust terminators. But outside of that, things should be pretty good this week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.